All right, welcome. I am so excited to have you here today. This is going to be an amazing interview if you yourself or your child are struggling with ADHD. I know there's so many resources out there, so many struggles that sometimes you feel frustrated or confused, and that's why I have an amazing ADHD and life coach with me, Robin Livingston Richter. Welcome, Robin. Thank you, Dr. Ty. I'm so excited to be here. I'm excited to be here as well. And excited because not only are you a coach, but you are a licensed family therapist as well. So excited to see how you blend those two together, not only with the clients that you've worked with, but also I know you have your own experience um, in your own family. So very qualified to be sharing some strategies that we're going to talk about today. Yes, I'm happy to share away. Yeah, so let's get to know you a little bit more. So tell me a little bit about yourself and how you came into the position that you're in and helping uh, adults and kids with ADHD. Yeah. So I am a family therapist. I've been a family therapist for over 25 years. And I realized in my practice that I was helping people, but I wanted to do more. And I wanted to really focus in on people living with ADHD because I myself have it. I was diagnosed in my 30s, my early 30s. And I realized that I wanted to be a mentor to other people going through it, whether it's a parent or a student or whoever it might be who's living, parenting, or um, married to ADHD. Got it. Yeah. What was, I'm curious uh, for you not realizing it until you're in your 30s, what were some of the struggles that you had dealt with before you even realized it was ADHD? That's such a great question. I always knew something was wrong with me, but I could never pinpoint what it was. I struggled with learning. I struggled with paying attention. I struggled in social relationships. And I also struggled with feeling that sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. I always felt different in some way. Wow, yeah, I could see that being really tough. Um, just, you know, social belonging is so important in our world today. And if you have maybe that little quirk or that little bit different, but you don't know why, Right? I, that, yes, that is so true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what do you, uh, so now then, who do you tend to help the most or what are some of your favorite clients that you work with? Yeah, I work with high school students, college age students, young adults, parents with ADHD or parents who parent a child with ADHD. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. What, um... And what are some of the struggles that are, are, I'm guessing if they know they have ADHD, that's, you know, like, okay, we typically have the diagnosis, but I know that can affect families' lives in so many different ways. What are some of the ways you see those families' lives being affected that they end up reaching out to you for? Yeah. So most people that come to me are at a tipping point in their life. And tipping point, what I mean by that, is that there's a lot of small changes that are going on, but it gets to the point where they can't handle it any longer. They cannot deal with one more thing. And it's affecting siblings, it's affecting parents, it's affecting family communication. And so something's really uh, challenging in the academic world or in the social world, wherever it might be, and sometimes it's all of that. The other reason why people will come to me is because they have been diagnosed with ADHD, but they've also been told they have coexisting conditions, depression, anxiety, and a few other conditions. Got it. Okay. And I could see then, especially your work as a therapist, you probably can really help them sort out those different things and see what's involved where and, and give them a really full picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is my goal. Yeah. Beautiful. And what do you see then as some of the... I'm curious if there's things that you see they've commonly tried that maybe they haven't gotten very far with, and then what do you do that might be different that allows them to get to that next level? Yeah. So one of the focuses of my ADHD coaching is strength-based. And so I do a lot of work around strength. Oftentimes people living with ADHD put so much energy into overcompensating for their struggles that they don't even realize they have strengths. And so right from the get-go, we really talk about strengths, and we use strength finders 
to, to talk about each person's top five strengths. Oh, beautiful. I love that. I could see too, and I love the title of your company, From Stigma to Strength, yes, because you exactly. get this label slapped on you, right? Yes. And now it's all about the label, the label, the label. And I bet, and I know from experience, but these kids, these adults have these beautiful gifts that are out there. And if we can say, let's just put that label aside for a moment. What are your beautiful gifts? How can we yes. get you to express those? Yes, exactly, exactly. And I really help my clients with a mind, a mind, uh, a mind shift okay. uh, change. And what I mean by that is oftentimes people will come to me saying what's wrong with me and we talk about what's right with you mm -hmm. and we maximize those strengths. Beautiful. Do you have an example, maybe yourself, your family or a client that you worked with of what would show up on Strengths Finder? that then all of a sudden the light bulb goes on. It's like, oh, cool, I could do more in that area. Yeah, so I'm currently working with a mom uh, that has ADHD, and two of her kids have ADHD as well. And she had no idea she had strength. And so she took the strength finders and found out that one of her top five strengths was uh, connectedness. And she didn't realize how important connectedness was to her and why she really struggled with wanting to spend more time with her husband and with her kids and why that was such a struggle for her until she realized because that is how she's wired. Mm, interesting. And then how, what did you do next or how did you start to guide her along that process of yeah, taking so that strength to the surface? One of the things that I'm doing with her and I do this with most of my clients is I really talk to them about their unique brain wiring and when we talk about this is who you are, it's a lot easier to accept that this is who I am and embrace our, you know, our unique differences to help us maximize our, uh, our strengths and live our best version. Okay, cool. Um, and are there challenges with, aside from ADHD, I know you mentioned like some of those other secondary diagnoses. Are there things like anxiety or nervousness or others, other things you finally con find commonly packaged with an ADHD diagnosis? So other conditions? Yeah. Yeah. So I do. I see parent-child conflict. Okay. And I also have seen um, a few eating disorders, uh, people who are struggling with eating and either under eating or over eating. Um, difficulty with body image and um, substance abuse issues as well. Okay, got it. So that we could see then it really starts to trickle into those other areas of life so much. Yes, and, and people are looking for ways to cope. Right, and that's what I'm curious then with if you say I've got all these different things going on, is there a way or a strategy to just start to prioritize and say, okay, let's give you a strategy here because that's going to affect these other areas or do you tend to work on multiple areas at once? Yeah, so one of the first things that we do, it's called a planning and strategy session. Okay. And it's a 90 minute session where we really dig deep into how ADHD is showing up in one's life. And people do a ADHD life wheel where they're able to uh, take segments of their life and really figure out in what areas they are most affected, or I'm sorry, affected, and um, how they want to change that. Okay, got so, it. So we begin to focus. Okay, so you start in that initial session getting that, those areas, what area they want to focus on next, and then what does the, what do the next steps tend to look like, or what, what strategies you start to share from there? Yeah, so for many people who do come to me, they are on medication and they want to have some other ideas to um, strategize and manage their symptoms. I have other clients that come to me that are not on medication and they're looking for, you know, different supplements or, you know, different uh, strategies on how they can manage their, their symptoms or traits. Mm -hmm. And so would it be okay if I talked about those now? Yeah, that'd be it's, great. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I think that'd be some great details for who's well, ever okay, watching. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, so we all who live with ADHD know that it can really be an adventure, and every day 
there can really be something new and different that might be a, uh, create an obstacle to get in our way. And so I really do talk about consistency, consistency with the four strategies that I'm going to talk about. Okay. So the first one is exercise. I'm a really big, big believer in exercise. To me, exercise is like my medicine. Exercise releases endorphins, which are feeling good chemicals that our body creates. And it really does help with mood and pleasure and enjoyment. Mm -hmm. So I highly, highly recommend exercise. And again, the consistency with it is really, really important. The next one I recommend is mindfulness. Mindfulness is paying attention with intention. I'm going to say that again. Mm -hmm. Paying attention with intention. And oftentimes with our ADHD brains, we are scattered. We're having a hard time focusing. We are you know, taken up with so many different um, great ideas or distractions. And so mindfulness can happen wherever you are in the moment. It doesn't have to be with anybody else. It's really about using your breath as an anchor. And I teach all my clients mindfulness through, as a technique to use throughout their daily life. Wow. So, um, the next one I would like to talk about is green time. Green time is spending time in nature, and this is a really, really important one. Uh, our ADHD brains crave that fresh air, uh, that green time. You know, time, time in nature. Brief exposure to green helps with concentration and oftentimes with impulse control as well because it really helps slow us down. And the last one I'd like to talk about is gratitude. And I just have a couple quick things that I look at um, every day in the morning and this is just a sign with hearts okay I and guess. another sign that says um, enjoy the little things in life someday you'll realize they were the big mm. things Can you see that I do I love that yeah <laughs> okay and so we don't have traditional art in our house we have quotes throughout our entire mm. house because it reminds me uh, how to be grateful and how to wake up with a grateful heart so people with ADHD often experience self-doubt and are really trapped in a conversation in their head with uh, a lot of negativity. And so I always recommend an attitude of gratitude. And that might sound really simple, but it's really important to practice this every day, waking up in the morning and thinking of three things that we're grateful for and thinking about what we get to do in a day rather than what we have to do. So I get to spend time with my kids or I get to spend time with my family. So, you know, those sort of things. And when, when problems arise, instead of thinking, why is this happening to me, to think about what can I learn from this? What can I gain from this? Mm -hmm. And so gratitude is just another really important strategy to help manage ADHD. Absolutely, That's, I love the idea of gratitude because I know when you're grateful you can't be worried at the same time just how our neurology is wired our brain has to pick one or the other yeah. and so when you can get that consistency there it allows your brain to when it starts to get nervous say "Ooh, but what am I actually grateful for in this moment and it gets out of that fight or flight out of that stress response and actually opens up so much potential I love that and mm -hmm. that is exactly what we're trying to do is shift our mindset and shift the way that we think about things and so yes worry is there and stress is there but how can you reduce it just a little bit mm -hmm. yeah and as we're talking I'm thinking in my head too if someone has ADHD and their mind is going all over the place it's going to be so tough to really like hone in and say what are the priorities I need to be doing right now and having someone like yourself to say okay well let's sit down let's identify your strengths Let's identify your goals. Let's identify, you know, really where you want to go in life. And yeah. now we're going to pick the strategies that are going to help you get there because by yourself, your mind might be too distracted or too overwhelmed to really do these habits consistently enough. Um, yeah. And there. the other thing that we do a lot of work in, in, in ADHD coaching is values. Mm. So people with ADHD align their strengths their values, their passions, and their talents, it's a lot easier to make decisions. It's a lot easier to prioritize. It's a lot easier to know where to focus energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that too because I see 
sometimes with the kiddos that we work with ADHD, mom will say like, yeah, they're distracted in these situations, but if we ask enough questions, a lot of times we find there is a situation where their kid can still focus in or can be engaged for hours in a certain area. And it's yeah. just about identifying their values and saying, oh, if this is important to you, your brain still has that potential. Exactly. And if that's what's motivating, then let's figure out how we can take that and mm -hmm. lend it to other areas. Absolutely. Yeah. And especially, I think, when you're working with those young adults at their middle school, high school, you know, in early college, you're at that point in your life where you're wondering, all right, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? And if all you've been told is you have this diagnosis, this stigma, this disability, you start yeah. to really become concerned, I imagine, of what the rest of your life's going to look like. And yeah. you can say, okay, well, the good news is you might have a couple weak points over here, but you don't have to do those the rest of your life. Let's find what you value. Let's find your strengths. And now shape something in your future that's aligned. Exactly. And to really learn how to maximize those strengths rather than doing what you think you should be doing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, there's a gentleman that I follow on social media, Gary V, and he talks about, you know, in today's day and age, we get sometimes too caught up in trying to overcome a weakness. But he's like, just let your weaknesses go, find your strengths, and double, triple, quadruple down on your strengths. And you're going to not only succeed more in life, but you're going to be happier in life, too. I just love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, so then I guess I'm curious, are there common things if as we start to tie things together here you know one I will ask in a little bit how people can get a hold of you but uh, before we do that what would you say if someone's looking and wondering hmm should I even investigate working with an ADHD coach are there things that they've already tried that haven't they haven't succeeded or at a point in their life that they can benefit the most what is what is kind of a tipping point where, yeah, I think you really should look into ADHD coaching? Yeah, another great question. You're just having all these great questions. Mm -hmm. So I would say there's not one answer to that question. Um, oftentimes people call and they'll consult and say, how do I know if I'm ready for coaching? Or, um, you know, maybe I can't do coaching right now, but I need to do something else. And so depending on what that something else is, I might recommend that they do some therapy before they come to coaching. Okay. And you did ask me at the beginning, beginning of our conversation today how therapy and coaching are different. And I don't know if you want me to say something about that real yeah, quick. Yeah, definitely. I think especially because probably a lot of our people watching might have tried therapy and because you are uh, credentialed in both, so you can actually give a really good reflection yeah. on both. So, First of all, I do want to say that there is a place for both, and many of my clients do both at the same time, and they really find that it's a, a beautiful uh, match of figuring out self awareness for them. So, depending on you know what they uh, what people are uh, going through or uh, experiencing, if it's keeping them stuck and they really need to process maybe some earlier years of trauma around um, ADHD or um, you know they're experiencing some things that they really feel like they need to um, do some work around I do recommend therapy uh, people when people are ready for coaching uh, it's a conversation that we have because I also want it to be a good fit for them if they decide to work with me as well and so what I always recommend that if people don't know give me a call and I'm happy to talk through this with them because it really is a wait what do I do kind of thing and some people who have called me have never tried anything before and other people have tried everything they can think of and so there's really not a right or a wrong it's more of a let's talk about this and figure this out for you got it okay beautiful so I think that's a great next step if you're watching this and you just have that little bit of interest or you have a ton of interest um, and wondering, hey, what could Robin potentially do to help me out? I think that conversation is a great idea. And then because you have so much expertise, you can help them help them filter through and decide those next steps. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I'd be happy to. Beautiful. Yeah. 
And what are the best ways for people to get a hold of you then? And we can actually, we'll put it in the comments below, um, but if you just want to share here as well. Sure. So best way to get in touch with me is to call me, and my phone number is 952-913-7800. Okay. Or visit me uh, on my website if you want to find out more information, and that's stigma to the number two strength stigma to strength dot com. Excellent, thank you. And yeah, we'll put the phone number on the website in the comments for you guys to be able to access nice and easily as well. So thank you so much, Robin, today. You, Doctor Ty, this mm -hmm. was really fun. Yes, and beautiful good. to be here with you and. Uh, thank you out there too for all of you watching and know that you know ADHD it's not an easy thing to be going through and there are so many amazing resources out there and especially resources from people who've been through it themselves and are wanting to help you out so I definitely recommend you reaching out and taking advantage of this opportunity to connect with someone and uh, see what you can do to turn your life into a, a powerful future. Yes, I love that, absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Ty. All right, you bet. Thank you, too, Robin. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Oh, thank you.